Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Karen Bryla McNeese, dietitian with the UK Health and Wellness Program. Go ahead and let me know that you can see me and hear me all right. You should be able to at this point. So just go ahead and give a little. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Well, this is really exciting. Um, because we have a really big group today. You guys, I think, know uh, this is a special Eat Well class um, in honor of our second annual Wellbeing Week. So we had our first Wellbeing Week last year, um, and we've built upon it and made it even bigger and better, I think, this year. So um, I hope that you guys are taking advantage of the various things that we're offering. I know that there's um, open houses at the gym, uh, open group fitness classes. We had some adoptable puppies you could play with over at Alumni Park Plaza the other day. Uh, we're going to do a snack cart this afternoon on campus. Um, there's going to be four stops starting at 2 p.m. Um, so, and there's also the step challenge going on. So again, that's just a, the, the, the tip there. I know there's many other things I didn't mention, but um, we're just really excited um, to share this week with you. Um, and kind of show you what we have to offer. And this is what today is all about, um, to invite everybody into this Eat Well class to kind of see what this program's all about, learn a little more, um, and maybe learn a little bit about food labels today, because that's gonna be our topic when we get to that in just a moment, okay? So, all right, we are up to 27 participants. Now we have a mix of people today, and I just wanna be sure um, I welcome each segment of participants properly, okay? So um, again, welcome to all the folks who are just visiting us today, who are guests, okay? Um, and feel free to let me know in the chat box, right, if you um, are a guest and what it is you are kind of hoping to get out of today or um, what it is that you are curious about, um, I'd be kind of eager to know. So um, anyway, welcome to our guests, um, either uh, you know, you, we probably have a mix of folks who are both on campus and off campus. Um, this online class is a great option um, because you can um, watch it from wherever you are and we also record it. So then you can watch it on demand later as um, part of the program too. Um, but I'll talk more about Eat Well in a moment. And the second group of folks we have are folks who are in Eat Well but this is their first week, okay? Because we start new participants each week. Um, and so there may be some folks in here who are official participants as of this week, but this is your very first class here um, online. So please let me know if there are current participants who this is your first class online with us. Is there anybody who is in that category? Okay. Okay. Wellness Week. Okay. Thanks, Raquel. And 259 there. Tell me, your, can you share your first name with us, if you don't mind, just so I, I know who you are? Michelle. Okay. Thank you. Well, welcome, Michelle. Okay. So, Michelle, you're one of our brand new participants. So, this is a very exciting week to start, right? Um, I will say we don't usually have this many folks in our online class. Again, this is special because of Wellness Week, but it's, it's fun and it's a good energy. Okay. And Katie, this is your first week. So, welcome to you. All right. You're official. And Murray, okay. You have been registered before. I thought I recognized the name. Yeah. Uh, but not able to attend till now. So, Welcome to you. Yeah, and we know, again, even with it being online and as convenient as that is, it can be um, still really tough to have that hour to devote to that and to be free um, on Wednesday at lunchtime. So yeah, we understand that that happens too. People have been in for a while but never been able to attend online, you know, until several weeks in. So we're glad you could join us. Good. All right, so welcome to Michelle and Katie and Marae, your first class as participants. Um, and I know we do have some 
returning folks, right? Folks who have been in the program and already been attending some of these live online classes. So uh, of course I want to uh, welcome them and we appreciate you being here as well. So I just wanna make sure everybody knows the kind of mix that we're dealing with and I'm gonna do my best to accommodate, you know, everybody's needs and, and questions today, all right? Um, I think the first thing I wanna be sure we do is for the people who are guests for Wellness Week and folks who this is their first um, live online class or you're just kind of getting started with the program, what questions? Are there questions you specifically had about the Eat Well program um, in terms of, you know, how it works, um, kind of our philosophy, uh, what you can expect um, out of it. I don't know. I'm just, I always like to kind of gauge, you know, where people are um, with that. Again, this, I think the questions might be similar if you're a guest or if this is your first week in the program. Oh, thank you for that. You love the online classes since you work off campus. And what's your, I'm sorry, can you share your first name? 226. Appreciate that. And like I said, we have a lot of people who are on campus who do the, oh, thanks, Barbie. Ah, okay. Well, good to have you here. Um, yeah, we have a lot of people who um, do the online class who are on campus. And it's, again, it's just hard to get away for those in-person meetings because we do have in-person meetings on Tuesday. Uh, I want to make sure everyone knows that. We have a lunchtime class at the Mining and Minerals building and an evening class at 515 in the nursing building. Um, so those are always options. And if you join the program, you can attend the in-person or online meeting week to week, whichever best fits your schedule, whatever you want to do. Um, but we know it's, it's tough to, to, to get away from the desk and carve that time out to come somewhere in person. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm keeping up on the questions here. Bethany, I'd signed up before, was afraid I couldn't make enough classes to make it worthwhile. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. I mean, we are here to, you know, provide information, but we're also here to provide, you know, encouragement and support and, you know, again, that supportive kind of group environment. Um, and we do have that online too. We, it, it, it's there, right? People think, how do you have this supportive community online when people can't see each other or talk to each other? But it does happen. And I think the people who are um, current members would um, agree with that. Um, but we, there's really no attendance expectations. So Bethany, I don't want you to feel like, um, you know, just because you're going to miss a few weeks or you know you can't come regularly that it's not worth signing up. Um, I mean, this is a free program, right? So you're not going to be out anything financially. Um, and it is not an issue to us at all. Um, again, we, we try to leave this very open-ended and participant driven. Um, and, you know, we know people are putting enough expectations on themselves about these kinds of things and commitments and, you know, trying to change your nutrition habits. You don't need any extra expectations or pressure from us, right? So you're not going to get that, right? I mean, we will email you if we haven't seen you for a while. We will, of course, answer individual questions and, you know, check up on you when needed. Um, but no, we're not going to put those kinds of attendance pressures or anything like that um, on you. So we just want you to use us how it will work best for you. Um, we have a lot of people, I think, who participate almost exclusively by watching the recorded videos and reviewing the um, information that we post on our website. So um, as a member, you would get access to our Eat Well website, which um, has like the weekly handouts on there. It has links to all the past videos, the video archive. Uh, it has kind of um, resources that we like, um, that we share, um, and we update that each week with, with different things. So um, that's what you have access to. We talk about a wide range of topics and they don't repeat every 10 weeks. So when you sign up, you're in it for 10 weeks, but then you are asked to, you know, re-enroll every 10 weeks and you decide every 10 weeks if you want to continue that commitment. Um, and so, but the topics don't repeat with those 10 weeks. We try not to do the exact same topic um, from January to December each year. We might do like, we're going to do food labels today. We might do food labels, but talk about it in two or three different ways, you know, um, but we'll talk about emotional eating. Um, last week we talked about resilience. We recently talked about building an efficient kitchen. Um, we talk about, you know, 
meal prepping, um, like I said, emotional eating, um, a lot of those kind of psychological topics, right, that we know are related to um, eating and nutrition. So yeah, there's, there's a range. Um, does that help answer your question, Bethany? Let's see. Will the class be able to tweak to the individual? So it's a good question. So the, um, the information presented uh, in class each week, right, is gonna be pretty generalized, right? We're going to try to make it so that it is, um, you know, useful and appropriate to as many people as possible, okay? Um, but, okay, we, you know, as part of being in the program, you have direct access, easy access, kind of a built-in relationship with me and my colleague, Vanessa Oliver, who is also one of the full-time dietitians at the wellness program um, and co-coordinates the program with me. So as part of the program, you just, again, have that like direct, open, any timeline with us um, to ask questions, to chat on the phone, um, submit your food journal. That's something you can do too and get personalized feedback on that food journal each week. Um, we can certainly help you, you know, um, address any maybe like chronic disease, you know, issues or food sensitivities or allergies or whatever you need to work around. Um, so yeah, there's always that, um, kind of option for more individual attention. So I hope that helps answer the question. Um, Ray, working with my physician now on weight loss, is there an option offering one-on-one -on -one exchanges? Yeah, so great, um, great question. And I will say some folks may have known our program in the past as Eat Well Weight Loss, um, but we dropped the weight loss part, okay? So we're just called Eat Well now. Um, but that doesn't mean, right, that a lot of people don't join to, you know, with weight management is a goal. A lot of people do, right? That hasn't changed. But we want people to know that that is not the sole focus of this program. And if you just feel like you could improve your diet and you need some support and information to do that, and you just want to feel better through fueling your body with, you know, better foods, um, you, you know, we can help you too, okay? So we definitely want people to know um, it's not just weight loss, but that certainly is is part of it, okay? Um, and we do, as part of um, UK Health and Wellness, we offer a free one-on-one -on -one consultation. So um, independent of your participation in the Eat Well program, right, the weekly meetings, you can meet with us one-on-one -on -one anytime, okay? And for an unlimited number of times too. So that is something you can do through your Live Well dashboard. I think you guys should be familiar with that, I think. Um, and you can just request a nutrition consultation and we can do it in person. We can do it on the phone or email. So again, we try to be flexible, whatever works for you. Um, and they also offer that um, for fitness and well-being. So you can talk with our health coaches or exercise experts um, and have the same service available through them too. Okay. Oh, Pat, that's such a nice thing to say. Thank you. Pat is a faithful and loyal participant. We appreciate you. And thanks, Mary. Yes, always a good reminder because it seems like we have a lot of people who are actually in the program and don't realize that we have those recorded lessons available. So um, we need to do a better job making sure people know that's available. Um, but yes, we do post them all. Okay, so you'd have access to that. Um, let's see. Oh, this is my buddy Jacob. Jacob is my colleague. We can all thank Jacob for Wellbeing Week this week, okay? Um, just want you to know that he has organized <laughs> uh, all the events that you have uh, seen advertised this week for uh, Wellbeing Week. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to Jacob. He has been very helpful to me uh, in implementing my Eat Well programming this week, but to everybody else on the staff as well. So yeah, a little shout out to Jacob. Jacob's giving you the link there to your Live Well dashboard so that you can um, you can request any of those consultations, or you would also use that Live Well dashboard to join the Eat Well program if that's something that you choose to do, okay? Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah. This has been months in the making, you guys, this Wellbeing Week, as you can imagine, so yeah. And we hope you'll come join us tomorrow at um, Employee Appreciation Day, right, down at the stadium, okay? Um, you're, we're going to have yoga on the field, and we're going to have our wellness table there if you want to come chat with us. Um, I'll be there from 1230 to 2 if you want to meet me in person. Um, but yeah, that will be a fun time too. Uh, oh, uh, I think 
I think Jacob's going to be driving the, the, the golf cart today. That's our, uh, that's our snack cart is a, is our wellness golf cart. Um, I don't know if I've asked him yet to drive, but I'm asking him now. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So be sure to come see us at the snack cart today if you're on campus. All right. Any other questions about the program? Again, for people who have already joined and people who are thinking about joining and who are just curious. Okay. When you join the program, you get a um, you get a booklet of materials mailed to you. You also get access to those online materials I talked about. And you also get a personalized meal pattern. Okay, now it's not a meal plan per se, right? Where we tell you, okay, eat exactly this, this, and this at breakfast, and this at lunch, right? It's not that, okay? We're not into, you know, those kinds of, you know, rigid kind of meal plans and protocol, right? We want this to be flexible and we want this to be something that can fit into your unique lifestyle. But we give you a meal pattern that gives you a suggested number of servings to eat from each macronutrient category a day. Um, and then you kind of figure out how you want to spread those things out throughout the day and how that's going to work for you. And so we guide you in terms of portions, um, if you're looking for, again, weight loss or weight maintenance. Um, and we also guide you in terms of quality, right? Making sure you're choosing and that you know what the most nutrient dense kind of choices are that will help, um, again, promote any weight loss goals, but also promote health too. That is always the, the priority. Okay. Oh, thanks, Jacob. Jacob has shared the uh, snack cart flyer there for you. It has the um, times and locations and a handy little map. So if you'd like more information about that. All righty. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Maybe specific to eat well, but I'll try to answer other questions too. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let me look at my agenda here. Make sure I'm following my own agenda. Okay. Well, we are going to just dive into doing class as we normally do it now. This was a little bit of a, a yeah, obviously, we want to spend some time getting to know you guys and answering your questions. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to kind of pivot and go ahead and do what we normally do in this class, because uh, that's what you're here, right, to get a feel for. Okay, so one of the features we have is part of Eat Well um, is uh, food samples. Now, being, you know, online, unfortunately, it don't work so well that way. The technology has not developed so that we can, you know, beam these snacks to you wherever you are, right? Um, but you at least can know what they are because we'll post them on the website and we will also share them in class. So um, the goal, we call it fun food. The goal of fun food is to show people that there are actually pretty healthy, convenient choices out there, right? Um, most of them I think you could put in like the snack category perhaps. Um, but I know people are always looking for, you know, convenient, healthy things, right? Things that you don't necessarily have to make from scratch all the time at home. Um, and, you know, this kind of does go along with our lesson for today on food labels. It's easy to maybe think or assume that, you know, anything that's in a can or a box or the frozen section or in a package is you know, a not healthy choice, right? We hear all this stuff about processed foods, okay? Now there is a big continuum of processed foods, right? There's canned diced tomatoes. That's something I use all the time. We call that a processed food, right? It's something that's not in its natural form. It has some processing, but it doesn't make it a bad choice, right? Um, so there's a lot of things like that. And we just like to kind of dispel the myth that um, you can't find healthy, convenient things, but because you can and most of them we buy at Kroger or Target or Meijer, um, you know, places that most people shop, okay? Um, so what we have today is actually something, if you come visit us on the golf cart, you will, you will see on the golf cart, uh, the snack cart. So you'll be able to try it if you're really interested, okay? Um, this is an exception in terms of where we bought this. We did not buy it at a store in town. We did buy these on Amazon uh, while we were shopping for snacks for the snack cart, right? We had to be sure we bought things in bulk and things that were individually packaged. So um, we bought a lot of stuff on Amazon uh, and this was one of them. So they are called, I'll show you here, olives, okay? And they are shelf stable, packed olives that are also flavored. This happens to be lemon and rosemary, but there's also basil and garlic, 
chili and oregano, and chili and garlic, okay? Um, there's 60 calories a pack, 250 milligrams of sodium. We know that olives are a healthy fat, right? I want to be sure everybody knows that. It's what we call healthy fat, monounsaturated heart healthy fat, right? So olives are good thing to eat in moderation, um, but they are a little bit higher in sodium, right? So if you're watching that, just be aware. Um, but again, for, you know, a decent portion, 250 milligrams of sodium, not terrible, again, to get that good dose of healthy fats. Um, it's pretty much all there is to it. The flavoring is pretty natural in these babies. They're green olives, not black olives, just FYI, okay? Uh, but they're delicious. I even got my 10 and 7-year-old kids to eat them, and they kind of pucker their lips sometimes at olives, but they love these. So, all right. Any that interest anybody? Anybody think they're going to try to get those on the snack cart? Again, olives. We bought these on Amazon, and they come in packs of 24, and you get six of each of the four flavors. I know, right? <laughs> Good. I had somebody try these at a snack cart um, off campus at Fountain Court the other day, and they went immediately after and ordered the box off Amazon because they love them so much. So <laughs> yeah, they're good. All right. And some people are even talking about, oh, this would be a great thing. Like I could slice them up and put them on pizza, right? To add maybe a little extra flavor or to put in a salad. So if the thought of just eating olives by themselves is not all that appealing. Uh, there's certainly other applications um, that you could use them for. All right. Okay, everybody doing okay? We good? All right. Okay, so now we're going to turn to our topic for today, which is food labels. So what's gonna happen is uh, a couple things. Let me, I am gonna share the file that I'm about to show you. Um, with you. Oh, maybe I can't do that. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. This is a different meeting room than I'm used to using, and I'm not sure how to send a file to you, but we'll be sure to find a way to get it to you. I know Jacob's here. Maybe he can talk me through it, or we can just be sure to email everybody the file afterwards to be sure that you have it, okay? Um, but I'm going to pull up a PDF here. Um, that's what we call our uh, food label guide. We created this guide ourselves. Um, that's what we like to do because, you know, we kind of have our own unique perspective on things, and we want to be sure that we are sharing that with you guys. Uh, where'd it go? Okay. Give me just a moment, get myself situated here. Make sure I can still see my chat box if you have questions. Okay, thanks Jacob. Jacob will be sure, says we'll be sure to get this file to you and email it to you. All righty. Um, okay. So everyone can see this? I just wanna make sure. Everybody can see food label guide. We're good, all right, great. And you can still see me and hear me and should see your chat box still. Okay. So food labels, we chose this topic very strategically for um, today's presentation because we knew, uh, or at least we hoped, um, that we would have a big group here, and we do, and we want to make sure that we talk about something today that, again, will be applicable um, and useful to as many people as possible. Um, now, we talked about this with our in-person classes yesterday, um, and they were not part of Wellbeing Week, and they still, you know, no matter how long people have been in the program or kind of been at this, um, they always take away something new it seems like when we talk about food labels so um, it is something that we do talk about every every so often okay um, but I do think that a lot of people I don't know feel maybe overwhelmed anybody feel overwhelmed when they're trying to read a food label and make a choice between different products at the grocery store. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes it's maybe a little paralyzing. You know, it's great. We have all this information on the package to inform us, but you know, if we don't know what to do with it or what really is important to pay attention to, um, it, it's not going to do us much good, right? Um, does anybody feel that way? Pat, it's a lot of time to shopping when you are trying to do no sugar. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh gosh. We're going to talk a little bit about sugar, but we can do, and we have done a whole class on sugar before. So you're right. That's a big topic. Um, and a tough thing to avoid, right? Especially if you're buying again, anything that is a little bit processed. Yeah. Um, that's going to be the trade-off sometimes, right? For anything that's not in its completely natural form, there's going to be a trade-off. There's maybe going to be some sugar added. There's maybe going to be a little sodium added and, you know, things like that. So, you know, these things aren't perfect, but we want to do the best we can. Yeah. So it seems like, right, that you guys, you know, that resonates with you, that, that kind of feeling of overwhelm and confusion. Um, yeah. Too many options. <laughs> you know, it's a double-edged sword with that. I feel like, I feel grateful to be able to walk in the store and have 50 different yogurts to choose from, but it's, it, it is, it's almost too much right? as a consumer, you know, choices are nice, but too many choices can be kind of a burden, right? So <laughs> it goes both ways, but you know, the great thing too about, I think the way the system works is that, you know, consumers have a pretty good amount of power, right? If you're kind of, you know, you know, speaking with your pocketbook at the grocery store um, and, you know, not buying things um, for a certain reason, then manufacturers tend to respond and they pick up on those trends. And that's how we get uh, more nutritious, you know, better foods on the shelves. So yes, you are kind of doing your part when you're reading labels and trying to choose the best product possible for yourself. Now, speaking of best possible product for yourself. That brings me to another point I want to mention before we get into a little more of the nitty gritty about food labels. There is no one best food for anybody, right? Just like there is no one best diet or way to eat for anybody. I always tell folks that who have just met me that, you know, if someone asked me what a perfect diet is, I wouldn't have an answer for you. I wouldn't. There's, there's no such thing, right? It would depend on all kinds of variables in terms of your health and your budget and your lifestyle and your food preferences and your culture. I mean, it depends on so many things, right? Um, but again, as part of our Eat Well program, we try to guide you in terms of amount and quality of food. That's really, um, you know, we're where there's the common ground, right, that we can all focus on. Um, but when we're looking at labels, right, how I might look at a label might not be the best way for Pat or Rachel or Missy to look at a label. They might have different priorities in terms of their nutritional needs and goals, right? So um, maybe I look at fiber first, but maybe Pat's looking at sugar first, right? Or Rachel's looking at sodium or calories first. So um, please know that there's no, again, one right way to interpret a label either, right? I know that doesn't necessarily help, you know, with the confusion, but I hope it gives you the permission, you know, to be flexible with this, right? Um, you're not going to make a bad choice for yourself, right? You're just trying to make the best choice for you. And that might not necessarily be the best choice for somebody else. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, because again, I think people just get scared. Like I'm going to pick the wrong thing. I'm going to buy the wrong food. Um, and I think when that's the way we're looking at it, you know, in that very kind of black or white way, that is going to automatically increase anxiety and, um, you know, make you feel bad, um, maybe with your choice afterwards. So, you know, we're just trying to do the best you can here, right? And sometimes we live in, we learn. I've done the same things with buying foods and, you know, not picking up on certain things on labels too. Are there certain things you guys look at on a food label? Since I was talking about maybe what you look at first, are there, I know Pat mentioned sugar, um, but are there other things that you guys tend to look at first? Calories, yeah, that's gonna be a common one. Sugar and protein, fat, calories again, yep. Carbs, okay, yep. That all makes sense. Ooh, net fiber. That's interesting. Or maybe, do you mean net carbs? I'm not sure about, huh. okay, net carbs, yeah, okay. So that's where, um, what happens there, right, is they subtract the fiber, right, from the total carbs to give you this like net carbs, right? Um, Eh, which, eh, I don't know, it's a little questionable in terms of some of its kind of, you know, actual scientific validity. But the idea is, you know, a food gets bonus for 
having fiber, right? And so looking for fiber is always a good thing because fiber is going to be something that tends to fill you up. So especially if you're trying to get the most bang for your bite, you know, in terms of satiety, um, fiber is going to be important. Important. Protein will be the other thing that's going to be pretty important in terms of helping you feel full from something, right? Um, let's consider the danger zone for sodium. Yeah. All right. We'll look at that. Okay, Pat's looking at calories per serving. Ah, and serving size, someone mentioned. Yes, which is, right, good consideration because you may look at those calories and think, oh, that's not too bad. And then look at the serving size and be like, oh, that's not much, right? Or I know I would eat two or three times that amount, right? Um, so that's, yeah, you do have to use calories and serving size together, absolutely, okay. Uh, yeah, so since Stacy um, asked about sodium, let's just look at that for a moment here. Um, we have our notes down here kind of of how to interpret the food label. Uh, you can see there under sodium, most folks should limit to about 2,300 milligrams per day. Okay, so I mean, danger zone, I don't exactly know, right? And again, this could be different for different people depending on you know maybe any health conditions that you have and hypertension things like that um but for most folks of average health 2300 milligrams a day is uh, appropriate um the thing i do want to mention is that the average intake of sodium in this country is 3500 milligrams a day <laughs> so i know 2300 sounds like a big number right um but actually we're eating a whole lot more sodium than that in this country every day, 3,500 milligrams, okay? Um, so for a lot of people, you know, they are over the 2,300 milligrams, so it does kind of behoove them to try to, you know, cut back a little bit, okay? Um, does that answer your question, Stacy? And you're talking about, yeah, so packaged frozen meals. Yeah, definitely a big source, right? So, um, you know, a lot of things, again, that are, you know, pre-prepared, uh, you know, kind of those entree type things um, will be fairly high in sodium per serving. And in my experience, there's not really a great way around that. Now you can find some frozen meals and entrees that are, you know, lower in fat or that have more fiber and protein, right? But finding one that's low in sodium is nearly impossible from my experience, right? So when I talk about there being trade-offs, when you're buying something that's in a package, that's one example. You're not gonna get around the sodium thing. Now maybe you can buy something that is a little lower sodium than something else, but it's still probably gonna be pretty high sodium, even if you've gotten all the other kind of things to line up in terms of um, other healthy nutrients. Yeah, um, but you know, there's a lot of, in terms of sodium, most of our sodium comes from things eating, eaten out away from the home things we haven't prepared. So again, those frozen packaged meals, uh, foods eaten out at restaurants or fast food, um, those are gonna be the main sources, okay? Okay, is this information for someone to maintain weight? Well, you mean kind of all the numbers on here? Yeah, anything we have listed on here, this sheet specifically, is gonna be appropriate for pretty much anyone. Again, barring any specific kind of chronic health condition, okay? Because when it comes to, you know, weight loss, right? Um, you know, the stuff about, you know, the types of fats and fiber and sodium and added sugars is all pretty much gonna be um, the same recommendations, okay? What really changes with weight loss mostly is calories um, and, yeah, calories and amount of these things that you're eating in terms of, you know, your different food, food groups. Okay. Does that answer the question? But these guidelines we're talking about today are really just for good kind of general health. Um, okay. No, that doesn't, I'm sorry. Maybe you can rephrase the question and I could try to answer again. I'm sorry. Um, or free, feel free to, to, to email if you have kind of more specific questions about that too. Um, okay, so yeah, if we can prepare more of our own food at home, 
that usually is going to be go a pretty long way for reducing our sodium intake. Uh, we're also going to look at some examples today of things that are surprisingly high in sodium because again, when something is packaged or it's salt shelf stable, right? Sodium is going to be used. And so it's in things that don't even, you know, taste salty or you wouldn't expect to be salty. Things like cereals and breads um, are really big contributors of sodium that, that people don't realize too. Okay. Um, so yeah, if that's a nutrient of concern for you, then you do want to be looking at the labels because there are quite a few surprises. Um, so right, the serving size, it's, you know, it, What's listed on the label reflects what people typically eat. That is how these are. Um, that is how these um, guidelines are um, created, based on what they know people typically eat. It's not saying this is how much you should eat of that food. Okay, um, so keep that in mind. Right, this is not like a recommendation. It is just trying to be reflective of what people typically eat. Now, most people still feel like no, that's not the amount people typically eat. Right, especially when you see like three-fourths of a cup of cereal listed as the serving size. Um, I know, right? But that's what their intention is. Okay, thank you for clarifying on that. So let's look at sugar then. Since you're asking about sugar and fiber, right? I would do. I want to look at the um, carbs because that's where we're going to find um, the sugar and the fiber there, okay? Um, so what we're talking about, okay, so you got your total carbs, right? So you're going to expect to find carbs and things that are grain-based, right? Like cereals and breads and crackers and those pasta, rice, okay? Um, now fiber, okay, is going to be, like we said, something that's going to help that food get digested more slowly. So that's why it's going to help you feel fuller longer, right? It's also a good thing if you're trying to control your blood sugar to be sure you're getting a good amount of fiber, right? So that your blood sugar is not kind of, you know, spiking and dropping um, throughout the day. Fiber will help regulate that, okay? Um, but three grams of fiber per serving is considered a good source of fiber. So I do, you know, want to be clear about that. And that's a very kind of standardized um, FDA type um, of definition, okay? Something that has at least three grams of fiber per serving, again, is considered a good source of fiber and products can put that on their um, packages, okay? Um, now you want to focus on whole food sources of fiber, like, the, like our uh, tip sheet here says, and that's going to come from fruits and vegetables, right? It's gonna come from whole grains, so like whole wheat bread and brown rice and whole wheat pasta and quinoa, things like that. It's gonna come from nuts and seeds, okay? Which are also gonna be sources of healthy fats. And legumes, so like beans, peas, and lentils, right? Are gonna be very high in fiber and also high in protein. That's why they're so filling and a good food to include in your diet, okay? Um, so yeah, three grams of fiber per serving. Now remembering, these servings tend to be pretty low, so if you're eating more than one serving, you're getting more than three grams of fiber um, in, that, in that meal. Um, the other thing to look at here is sugars. Now I know you've mentioned here, um, is it Michelle? I'm sorry, um, that 24 grams of sugar seems like a lot. Now we wanna make a distinction between what we call naturally occurring sugar and added sugar. Okay, thanks Michelle. So this label that you see here, is a newer food label. Have you guys seen this on packages? It's got the calories, like real big font. That's how you know it's the new label, okay? A lot of, yeah, manufacturers are starting to use it now um, because it's gonna be required for them starting in 2020. So they're already adopting it, okay? Um, smaller manufacturers will have a little more time to, to, to get that on their packages. But this is what we call the new label, right? So you see those big calories, that's one of the differences. Um, one of the other differences is that they now tell you how much of the total sugar is what we call added sugar. And added sugar is anything that's added in the processing of a food. It's not naturally occurring to that food, okay? So a great example would be cereal, right? Um, most of the sugar that's in any given cereal is gonna be added sugar, okay? And so we're, we're more concerned with this type of sugar, added sugar, than we are with what we call naturally occurring sugar. Naturally occurring sugar is fructose and lactose that's in your fruit, milk, and yogurt, okay? So when you see plain yogurt or you look at plain milk, right, or you look at a label for a banana, 
you're going to see sugar listed there, okay? But it's naturally occurring sugar. It's inherent to that product. And you're getting all kinds of other great nutritional benefits from fruits, milk, and yogurt, right? So we're okay with that natural sugar that comes along with that. This recommendation, 24 grams a day, is actually for added sugar. So it's not actually even including the um, fructose and lactose, the natural sugars, okay? Like I said, we're not really concerned about that. Um, as long as, again, this is all fitting into your daily calorie needs, all right? Um, but 24 grams a day for women and 36 grams a day for men is not a lot, you guys. You could eat a big old bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios and get pretty close to 24 grams already for the day. Um, a 20 ounce soda is easily like 60 something grams uh, of sugar. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is adding up fairly. Okay, I'm sorry, I temporarily muted myself. Everybody, yeah, everybody okay? <laughs> sorry about that. We're back, we're good. Yeah, okay. All right, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so if this is something you have not looked at before, start paying attention and using it because I think it's a great update to the food label, all right? Um, so now, for example, when you look at that flavored yogurt, right, um, that strawberry yogurt, you'll be able to see the total sugar, but then see how much of it is added, right? Because again, you know there's some natural lactose there, but now you also know how much is added and you can kind of, you know, compare products to see which one maybe has less added sugar and make a better decision, okay? Um, Michelle, I hope that helped kind of clarify a little bit with the fiber and the sugar, okay? All right, cool. Um, and you know, oh good. The thing too with, I don't know if anyone here is using like a um, food tracking app, a lot of people do use something like MyFitnessPal or Lose It, right? Which is always a great exercise, right? Because we know that, um, you know, it, they, those food tracking always makes you kind of more accountable and mindful um, of your choices. But what, what I've noticed with those apps is that they lump all sugars together. So I'll have people show me their food journal and say, oh, but it, you know, it, it dinged me because I ate too much sugar, right? Um, but then I look and I see, well, it was, you know, maybe mostly sugar from, you know, some fruit and some milk or yogurt, um, not necessarily added sugar. So I keep that in mind because um, I've heard that more than once um, that people got real discouraged like about the sugar. Um, but again, it's not making that distinction. Um, and we care about added sugar for a couple of reasons because one, it's adding excess calories, right? Without really giving us any nutrition or satiety. So if you are trying to manage your weight, that is a concern. Okay. Um, second, the American Heart Association is the group that put out these added sugar recommendations because there is a growing body of research that shows uh, excess sugar intake is linked to inflammation in the body and risk for heart disease. Okay. So uh, most people don't make that connection, right? You're thinking more about cholesterol and sodium and, you know, saturated fat maybe when you're thinking about heart disease, but sugar plays into. Okay. Uh, speaking of the fats, let's go back to that. Um, you might see a product that has a good amount of fat, right? But you want to ask yourself is again, is that natural to the product? You're going to look at nuts or seeds and see that most of the calories come from fat. It's got a lot of fat, right? Um, but that's what it is. That's what it's supposed to be. Same with these olives I showed you, right? They're mostly fat. But that's okay. That's what they are. They're good fats, though, those monounsaturated healthy fats. Uh, you might, you know, look at um, guacamole, right? Or you might look at, you know, some salmon and see, oh, that looks like a lot of fat on this label. But again, they're good fats, right? So we don't always want to judge a food by, you know, fat content alone. We just want to make sure uh, if it does have a higher fat content, we know where it's coming from and that it's coming from a healthy source, okay? Um, Saturated fat is something to look at. There's been a lot of controversy about that lately. You know, how bad is it? Um, and we know there's different types of saturated fats and not all of them are quite as bad as, as, as we thought, okay? For example, coconut oil is one of those things that it's a saturated fat. It always will be a saturated fat, but it might not be quite as harmful as we thought it was, okay? Um, 
but the saturated fats like um again coconut oil um things like obviously you know lard or cream cheese or high fat dairy products and high fat red meats those are all saturated fat sources those are never going to be better than your unsaturated fats okay um again some of them just may be less harmful than than others um let's see trans fat anybody look for that on labels trans fat it's actually coming out of a lot of products now okay because there's such awareness about it um but the american heart association says trans fat is probably even worse than saturated fat okay uh trans fat's a man-made fat where they actually just take good unsaturated oil and infuse it with hydrogen atoms so it turns solid at room temperature and it's a cheap ingredient to use it makes things it makes things shelf stable um so you see it in a lot of more inexpensive lower quality products um but it you know also adds a certain texture um and mouthfeel to products as well um but it's pretty bad in terms of its association with um increasing cholesterol inflammation and risk for heart disease right so just keep that in mind. You may see that the label says zero grams, but there's a loophole. They can, they can say zero if it's less than half a gram per serving. Um, and the American Heart Association said there's no safe amount to consume. So you wanna make sure on that ingredient list, you don't see something called partially hydrogenated oil. That means trans fat. Anybody ever look for that? Like I said, it's a good thing it's getting harder to find, okay? Um, so you may not see it so much, but always good to check that they're replacing most of these partially hydrogenated oils with palm oil, which is a saturated fat. Um, again, mildly better than trans fat, but that's kind of the, the substitution that's being made now. All righty. Yes, let's look at some labels. When you get this handout, you're gonna see on the back here that there are some um, misleading food claims. You can read through these yourself. They're very self-explanatory. I'm gonna to try to highlight them as we look through these food labels. Yes, because that's what I wanna do, do next. I have some um, examples. So let me switch out from here. I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna pull up a new share. Okay, hold on, let me get my chat room back. Okay, can everybody see that all right? Yes, okay, great. Hold on just a sec, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So you see, I got this little question mark, and that's kind of how I set this up. We'll get through as many as we can here. Um, but yeah, so this is a questionable product. Now, if anyone is eating any of the products that have a question mark here today, please do not feel bad, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that any of these things are, you know, complete no-goes and that you should never buy. Like I said earlier, right? This is all very, you know, unique to you, right? So maybe Cheerios protein has a place in your life and, you know, whatever, and that's fine, right? Um, it can work, but we're just using these purely for example purposes to show you um, kind of some of these tricky things that do go on with food labels, okay? Um, so you see, we got Cheerios protein. The funny thing about this one is it's, oh, protein, right? We all know Cheerios, right? Good old fashioned yellow box plain Cheerios is the best Cheerios to buy. It has like no added sugar, uh, no nothing, right? If you want it a little sweeter, maybe add some fruit or something like that to it. Um, but that, that, that is a good cereal, whole grain, low sugar. But Cheerios kind of taking advantage of its good reputation and knowing that people now are looking for more protein in their foods, right? Um, came out with this Cheerios protein. Now, I don't know if you guys, you guys can see how much protein it has. You see that on the label? Seven grams. Okay. Now, most cereals per serving are probably going to have at least four grams of protein per serving because grains naturally have some protein. Okay. So if you're looking at a cereal, it will never say zero grams protein. It will probably say like three or four anyway because 
protein is inherent to any grain that cereal is made from. Okay, so seven is not that all that impressive to me. Um, but the other thing is the front of the box. Now they're advertising 11 grams of protein, but that's with milk. I think most people eat cereal with milk, right? Uh, and I'm gonna say this is specifically cow's milk or soy milk because almond milk has no protein, all right? Uh, so assuming you're using some kind of you know, cow's milk or soy milk, it will add those four grams of extra protein. So I think that's pretty misleading, all right? Um, the protein deal does not impress me much. The other thing about this is look at the sugar. 16 grams, you guys see that there? Now this label is not showing us the added sugar feature that we saw on that updated label. But like I said, when it's a process thing like this, you can assume most of that sugar is added, okay? That's a lot of sugar, you guys, okay? We talked about 24 grams of added sugar a day for women. Assuming you only have the one and one quarter cup that this serving size is, that's already two thirds of the way there, right? Any other thoughts on this one? Questions? If you're shopping for a cereal, I'd look for something that has at least three grams of fiber, like we talked about, because that's a good source of fiber, which this does have. So three grams of fiber and no more than 10 grams of sugar. And I guarantee you, if you look for three grams of fiber and less than 10 grams of sugar, you'll be eliminating at least 90 to 95% of the cereals on the shelf, okay? Other things that fit in there would be, like I said, regular Cheerios, um, things like Wheaties or Total, shredded wheat, um, a lot of the Kashi cereals fit in there. What are the other carbs and why is it separated from total carbs? Should they be added to total carbs when calculating carb intake? Let's see. So we got 29. I mean, we got 19, 20. So that is... Yeah, it's just separating out, right? Like the other carbs, it's what's left after you take out the fiber and the sugar, right? It's just like the carb that is inherent to the grain is really what that that is. Does that make sense? It's not honestly something I usually look at, like other carb. Um, like I said, the main things are going to be that fiber, maximizing that and minimizing the sugar. But generally, the fiber, sugar, and other carbs together should equal the total carbs. Yeah, so that total carb is everything underneath there. So fiber, sugar, and other carbs together is the total carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like other outside of the total. It's part of the total. Yeah, it is kind of weird terminology, but that's how you can make sense of that. The other thing I'll say about this product is that it does have whole grain corn as the first ingredient. And we were talking about whole grains being beneficial because of the fiber that they have. So that's why this product has, you know, is a good source of fiber at three grams a serving um, because it has, you know, it's made with whole grain corn. A whole grain is something that has its um, nutrition and its fiber intact, right? Um, and so it's unlike white flour that has those nutrients and the fiber stripped out, um, whole grains will have that intact. And that's what you want to look for. You want to see that as the first ingredient because ingredients are listed in order of their weight in the product. So the first few ingredients can tell you a lot about it, about that product. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's what I would recommend instead. Good old fashioned Cheerios and maybe an egg. Much higher quality source of protein and without all the sugar added. <laughs> okay. Here's another label. This is you know, you get this whole bottle for 130 calories, which is not terrible. And that's because it says lower sugar, right? And I have to say, when I first saw this product, I'm thinking, well, they just put less sugar in it or added less sugar. That's cool, right? Because um, again, a lot of these bottled smoothies are notoriously high in calories because of the sugar. Um, there's technically no added sugar because all the sugar is coming from a fruit source. All right? But the problem is, a couple problems. There's only two grams of fiber in this whole bottle. So theoretically, you're supposed to be getting all this fruit. Part of the benefit of fruit is to be getting, um, oh, no worries. Thanks for coming. Um, the rest of the, you, you should be getting some more fiber than that when you're eating 
a bunch of fruit, right? So that's not a whole lot of fiber to show for all this fruit sugar that you're getting, is my point, okay? That is not a good ratio. 26 grams of fruit sugar with only two grams of fiber. You could do a lot better if you were just eating real fresh fruit, right? Um, the other thing I wanna point out too is in this ingredient list, and I know, I don't, hmm, I wonder if I can highlight it. Oh, here we go. There's something called monk fruit juice there, okay? Um, and that is actually a non-nutritive sweetener, like a stevia or a sucralose, something that adds sweetness without adding calories, okay? So um, it's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing, but it's not like they magically just use less sugar. They have put something in there, right, to help it taste sweet without the calories, okay? Any questions on this one? Be very careful with the bottled smoothies. I honestly haven't really been able to find any that I'm a big fan of. Um, I would say your best bet is this, <laughs> right? Eat your fruits and vegetables or make your own kind of smoothie at home, right? Where you can control the sugar and maybe, you know, put whole fruit in there to keep the fiber and add some extra protein. And that will be a lot more filling um, and a lot more nutritious. Here's another one. Veggie chips, and again, no offense if anyone's eating these, it's okay. But you know, the front of the package is, okay, a picture of a potato, but some but spinach and tomatoes, and they're called veggie chips. So you're thinking, you know, veggies, and they're different colors. So you might be thinking like, yeah, these are really like veggie based. But look at the first ingredient there first two ingredients, potato flour and potato starch. These are really just like potato chips. Tomato paste and spinach powder is what's given some of those chips that like green or that red kind of color to make it look a little more veggie-like. Uh, but you guys, these are really, again, a lot like lower fat potato chips, okay? Still have seven grams of fat a serving, which is kind of not dissimilar to other types of chips, okay? Uh, dietary fiber less than one gram. So again, you're not really getting fiber from any meaningful vegetable source, right? Um, so yeah, this is a little bit of a, a gimmicky thing too, okay? Any thoughts on this one? No? Okay. This is one I love as an alternative. If you're looking for a chip that is like a chip, uh, but much healthier. There's something called bonitos. They're made out of beans. You get them at Kroger, okay? And you can see they have a ton of fiber and protein per serving because they're made out of beans, right? Um, so they are actually pretty filling and it's actually kind of hard to eat too many of these because you actually get full from them. Um, they have a white bean, a black bean. Um, I think they have a lime flavor. Um, they have quite a few, but might be something to look for if you're into chips and looking for a better alternative. Oh, let's look at, oh, hold on, let me see what else I got here. Well, I got this fiber one bar, again, no offense if you're eating fiber one bars, there's worse things, right? Um, and they're gonna be pretty filling because they have all that fiber, right? Five grams and 90 calories, one little bar, that's pretty good. And only five grams of sugar, that's not bad either, all right? But how they're doing that is with this ingredient here, chicory root, you guys see that? That means added fiber. There's the, the fiber in here is not natural because this is not a natural food, right? This is a completely processed food like any bar is, right? Um, Marae, I love those. The off the eaten path veggie crisps are a different beast than those ones we just looked at. And I do approve of those. Yeah, they are good. And you can get those at Kroger too. I almost bought them for the, for the snack cart, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, they're good. Um, but chicory root extract is what they typically put in to, for fiber, to boost a product's fiber content. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because the fiber like this will still be filling and will still help, you know, with your GI tract movement, right? Um, but we don't know that these added fibers have the same benefits as the naturally occurring fibers that you're going to find in things like fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and nuts and seeds, right? Um, we do not know that it has the same health benefits. So you wanna be sure you're not relying too exclusively on products like this for your fiber because you might be missing out on the health benefits that we know natural fiber gives you, okay? 
we do like these bars. So if pe people always asking us about bars. Lara bar, Luna bar, RX bar. Good choices. Anybody eat any of those? Okay. Okay. All of these you can buy at Kroger or Meyer. Yeah. Yay, you guys eat some of those. Validation, right? Oh, that is a deal, Bethany, because those are, they are not cheap, I will say. They are not cheap. Of the three of these, they're the most expensive. But um, RX bar is basically like a Lara bar. It has a fruit and nut base, but it has more protein because they've added some egg whites in there. So uh, it tends to be pretty filling for what it is. Yeah. And no weird stuff added, right? These are fairly natural things. Luna probably has the longest ingredient list, um, but it's still decent as far as bars go. Um, these are some less sugar yogurts we like. I'm just kind of skipping that other stuff, but I know people like to see what foods we do recommend, but you know, sugar is a tricky one uh, in yogurt. So trying to look for less sugar ones. Um, Chobani and Siggy's are good brands. I don't know if anybody eats those. And what else do I have? Oh, here's another whole grain example. I'm sorry, I can't, I didn't make my annotations go away. Um, but we have some wheat crackers here. Not the same as whole wheat, right? So you have unbleached and rich flour is your first ingredient. You guys, that's white flour, okay? And look at the fiber is only one gram, which should also be a clue like, eh, probably not a whole lot of whole grains in here. Wheat just means, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean whole wheat. It's just stripped out wheat with no nutrients and no fiber. But, you know, again, this cracks me up because the box is very natural looking and it's called Back to Nature and it says non-GMO. So you're thinking, hey, this is a great choice, right? This is healthy. Yeah, that's the allure of the packaging sometimes, right? That's how they design it. Um, but an example that is whole grain, good old Triscuits or Wheat Thins, whole grain will be the first ingredient. There's only a few ingredients for each of these. You can even get them in some different flavors. Um, but that would be something to look for as well. All right. I know we're a couple minutes over, and I appreciate you guys staying with me. Yeah. Jacob, thanks for that final plug for Wellbeing Week. Yes, the Appreciation Day, Yoga on the Kroger Field, as well as Family Movie Night for free at the Student Center on Friday night, Inside Out. Yep. Cool. Well, thanks, you guys. I really appreciate you being here and checking us out. And please don't hesitate to contact me um, if you have more questions about the program or you're interested in a uh, nutrition consultation, whatever it is we can do to help you with your nutrition goals, please let us know. Oh, great, Bethany. Glad to hear that. Oh, you are very welcome. You guys enjoy the rest of the week and the rest of this lovely day. And we'll hope to see you around soon. Maybe it's snack cart. All right. <laughs> Bye.